Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? You know, I really didn't know what title to give this video because it has so much going on. I'm making a folding chessboard using five different types of wood. Walnut, sycamore, curly maple, purple heart, and ebony. And it has a five color epoxy logo from the Virginia Military Institute on one side. And on the other side, it has a two color epoxy logo from the University of South Carolina. And then I make a tray with box joints for the chessboard to sit in. And then I make a box out of leopard wood, bird's eye maple and curly maple for the chessboard and chess pieces. It really is exquisite. Since I've made so many chessboard videos already, I'm going to zip through making the playing field, the, the chessboard squares, and then I'll slow down to focus on the rest of the project. So, ready, set, here we go. I'm going to start on the CNC to carve the VMI logo. I have the two halves of the board clamped tightly together to prevent epoxy from leaking down between them. I'm starting with a 15 degree V bit to carve the outline of each letter, and then I'll switch to a 1 8 inch end mill to clear out the remainder. I'm using total boat epoxy and hardener at a 2 to 1 mix ratio, and then I'll add in some red mica powder for the letter M. You need to be sure the epoxy is well mixed. After you've mixed it, mix it some more just to be sure the resin and hardener are fully mixed. After pouring in the epoxy, I tap it lightly to help release air bubbles that are trapped at the bottom, and then I use a heat gun to help the bubbles escape. Now some yellow epoxy for the letter V. Next is the letter I, which will be white.
Next, the CNC will carve around the letters, and then I will fill the circle with epoxy mixed with black mica powder. Next is a gold ring that goes around the logo. This basically took five days so that each color could cure overnight. Now the board is flipped over and the CNC will carve the USC logo. This one will be faster because it's only two colors. The background color of the logo is called Cardinal, which is something that I'll have to try to make using a combination of mica powders. I started with a color called Flamingo Pink. And then I added a bit of Tiger Orange and then a bit of copper. I don't know how close I can get it, especially because it will look different after the epoxy has dried. Now I want to carefully cut the epoxy to separate the two halves. I'll need to cut it fairly deeply so that I can get a clean edge. I have epoxy on both sides, so it will not be that easy to separate. Now I'll start working on the frame. I'll start by jointing the walnut so that it's flat on the bottom and one edge. And then I'll cut it to the correct width and then run it through the planer to the correct thickness. This chessboard will be about three quarters of an inch thick when it's all finished. I planed the frame pieces to be thicker than that because I need to slice the frame pieces so I can insert rare earth magnets into the bottom piece. Then I'll glue them back together again. The bottom piece is thinner because the rare earth magnets need to be very close to the surface. Next I'll cut the frame pieces to the approximate length. 
and I'll mark all of the pieces so that I can keep track of them when I glue everything back together. Now I'm using the CNC to cut recesses for the magnets. The magnets have a diameter of 20 millimeters and they will be about a sixteenth of an inch from the surface of the wood. So that does not leave a lot of room for sanding after everything is assembled. I'm testing to make sure I have the polarity correct because I won't be able to fix it after it's glued together. I put a bit of CA glue around each magnet to hold them in place. Next I'll joint the edges of the frame pieces and then clean the other edge up on the table saw. It's cool how they stick to the fence now that they have magnets inside. I'm going to put a purple heart border on the USC side to match the logo and an ebony border on the VMI side. I'm also cutting a groove along the outside edge for curly maple edge banding. I like the edge banding and borders to fit really tightly to avoid having any unsightly gaps. Since the purple heart and ebony borders are both proud of the surface of the frame, I need to put a block of wood to elevate the frame so that I can run it through the drum sander. After I get one side flat, then I can run the other side through without the block of wood. Now I'll trim off the excess edge bending. The frame is going to fit into the playing field with a tongue and groove fitting, so I'll cut the groove around three sides of each half. I make a cut, then flip the board around, and then cut again so that the groove is perfectly centered.
Next, I'll cut the tongue along the inside edge of the frame to fit into the groove. Now I'll cut the miters. I do this in multiple passes and checking with the playing field to carefully sneak up on the fit. Now I'll cut off the excess length of the short frame pieces and shave off the tiniest amount of the playing field to get a clean edge. Next, I need to drill recesses along the mating edges to insert rare earth magnets. I'm using a 12 mm Forstner bit and I'll set the depth stop so that I can fit three magnets into each recess. Then I'll round over the edges of the board with a 16th inch round over bit and then take the board outside to spray on pre-catalyzed lacquer. I didn't get the USC Cardinal color quite right, but it matches the Purple Heart perfectly. Now I'll make the tray. I'll start by resawing some walnut and sycamore to be 3 eighths of an inch thick for the sides of the tray. Cutting the sides to be two inches wide, that's the size I need to hold the board, which is one and a half inches when folded, and the bottom of the box, which will take up half an inch. Then I'll use my Inkrib eye box jig with a quarter inch dado blade to cut box joints. This continues the chest theme by having eight chest squares in the corners of the tray. 
Although these will not be square, they will be a quarter of an inch by three eighths of an inch. At my router table, I'll set a quarter inch router bed to be 3 16 of an inch high, which is half the thickness of the sides, and then a quarter of an inch away from the fence. Then I'll cut slots into the side pieces to hold a quarter inch plywood bottom. I can cut the grooves in the sycamore all the way through, but with the walnut, I'll need to stop short of each end so that the grooves don't go all the way through. I'm just eyeballing it instead of using stop blocks. Next, I'm setting up a 3 8 inch round nose bit to put finger slots into each of the walnut ends. In this case, I will use stop blocks because this needs to be more precise. Now I'll start working on the leopard wood box. This is a really nice piece of wood with a lot of figure. I bought it a few years ago just because. I'll start by joining a piece of bird's eye maple that I will use for the top of the box. I will resaw it and then glue together the two book matched pieces so that it's wide enough.
This leopard wood was already surfaced on both sides when I bought it, but I'll joint it again to be sure it's nice and flat. I cut 45 degree miters for the corners of the box. I have a stop block on the miter gauge to make sure that the two short pieces are the same length, and then I'll set it up again to make sure the two long pieces are the same length. Next, I'll cut a groove along the bottom for the quarter inch plywood and along the top for the bird's eye maple top. and I'll test the fit to make sure it's just right. This is just regular maple plywood for the bottom, but it will be covered with felt. I'll cut a, a rabbit along the edges of the top to fit into the groove that I cut in the sides. Now I'm sanding along the top edge before I glue it in place so that the corners are not too sharp. I'll do a test fit and then I'll glue it up. I'm only putting a dot of glue on each end of the bird's eye maple to allow it to expand and contract. And there's an air gap in the groove to leave room for the expansion.
With the glue dry, I can cut the top off. Of course, I can't have the riving knife in when I do that. I have no idea what was going on with this camera, but I'm guessing it was something to do with the heat because it was about 95 degrees that day. The leopard wood is quite a hard wood, so it's actually smoking inside when I make the cut. Now I will consistently sand each edge with the same number of passes. Now I'm cutting some thin pieces of curly maple to line the inside of the box. This is what the tray will sit on. I won't glue these in place so that it will be possible to change the felt to another color. It fits tightly enough that no glue is needed. Now it's time to add the hardware. I'll put a latch on the front and two hinges at the back. This is a Brusso spring-loaded latch, number JB818. You can buy a template to use with a router and bushing, but I decided to make my own out of plywood using my CNC. You definitely wouldn't want to freehand cut this slot because you want a tight fit. I did multiple test cuts on a scrap piece of wood, so I was confident this would work. I have a 3 16 inch router bit and a half inch bushing following the instructions that Brusso provides for their template.
fit perfectly after cleaning it up with my chisel, and then I set it in place with some Starbond CA glue. Next, I'll install the hinges. This is the Brusso JB103 stop hinge, and I wanted to show you that the placement is important. The hinge opens 95 degrees, and if it's not back far enough, then it will not open all the way because it will hit at the bottom. I'm setting my marking gauge to the right depth so that the hinge is properly set back. You want to take your time to mark everything precisely. I'll clamp the lid in place and mark it at the same time as the box so that everything lines up. I'm using a marking knife rather than a pencil because it is more precise. I'm clamping this piece of wood in place to support my trim router. Then I will cut this freehand going close to the markings but leaving a bit that I will clean up with a chisel. Leopard wood is about 50% harder than maple, so it took some effort with the chisel.
It fits well. I'll drill with a self-centering VIX bit. And then I will prepare the holes for the threads with a gimlet because it is very easy to shear off the head of a brass screw if you're not careful. You need to do as much as you can to prepare. It helps to add a bit of wax to the screw, but I did not do that here. Before installing the hinges, I will apply a finish of pure tongue oil. I poured a little bit too much here, but I'll be able to move that around to the other pieces. I think the leopard wood is really attractive when the finish is applied. The box is really heavy with the chessboard inside. I think it weighs around 35 or 40 pounds, so I'm going to put a chamfer along the bottom to make it easier to lift. Now I'm screwing the hinges in carefully. I actually messed up the head of this screw a bit, but I was too afraid the head would snap off if I tried to unscrew it, so I just left it as is. You want to be sure you do not over tighten the screws because the heads will snap off easily. If that happens, you can watch my video on how to remove a broken screw. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So I gotta ask, would you make it?